Some projects you do because you want to do them. Others you do simply because they need done. With four children plus mom and dad, we never have enough towel drying space. Not a problem when you got a DIYer in the house. This cost me less than $3 to make and it took about two hours. It's a simple and easy project that anybody can do. I've got some furring strips on hand and I'll just pick a couple that I think will do. Then pull out my mobile fold down miter saw station and set it up. Actually, just about everything in my shop is mobile for maximum flexibility and usefulness. In fact, just about everything in my shop can serve more than one purpose. I have videos on a lot of what you see, so if you're curious about any of it, you can simply search my channel for what you see, or you can head off to my website, simplyeasydiy.com. There you will find not just what you see in my videos, but a whole slew of other simple and easy projects as well. Check the description. I'll take a furring strip over to the miter saw and cut a few pieces the length so I can make the sides of my towel drying rack. Now, these boards that I'm using, they have these rounded over edges. I've ran them through my table saw to remove that feature on one side. The other side I don't need to worry about right now as I'll be doing some shaping later on. As for the side that I took off, that is so my glue up will be nice and flush. While those are drying in the clamps, I'll take another board, cut it to length, and rip it to one and a half inch strips on my table saw. These will be the rack crossbars. I've set up my router table with a round over bit. That's so I can take this and make it look like that. Now that that is done, the sides that were drying in the clamps can be removed and sent through my planer a couple times to even things out. I've already decided which way these boards are going to be facing in my project after I've assembled it. So I'm going to take a moment right now and just mark out the waist side so that I don't get crossed up on the measurements for the cross bars. After that, I'll measure and mark down from the top first, then in from the back side. That gives me a cross mark so I can line up the end of my crossbar and trace the contour. And that is exactly what I'm looking for right there. Now I can rinse and repeat on the other side of the board. Now I'm going to want to remove the material inside of that mark, so I put a Forstner bit in my drill press to help me out with that. However, I'm going to be very careful and stay off the inside of the lines that I've marked. I'll fine tune it in just a little bit. All right, that's looking good so far. Now I can remove that Forstner bit and set up a straight router bit in my drill press. And with that, I can take the material right down to my pencil line. I'm being very careful here, test fitting as I go. I know my video editing is not going to show that, so don't be confused. I did take a little bit of extra time and make sure that I got this step correct. When I get it to where I want it, the crossbar should fit snug, and I should be able to pull on the crossbar without it falling loose from its side. Taking the two sides and laying one on top of the other, I can fit the cross pieces in their slots. Now, I can book match the two side pieces on the table saw. Using my tapering jig, I can taper the front of my sides. Yes, I have a video on this jig. Here's a link for it. Okay, upon closer inspection, I noticed I had maybe an inch or so from the bar to the edge on this one side, but... I have more than an inch or so on this other side. That's an easy fix. I'll just rip that down while I'm here on the table saw. That's better. 
Now I'll just take these two sides over to my disc sander and round over the corners so that tiny people don't bump their heads and hurt themselves. Now I can remove the crossbars so I can go back to my router using that same round over bit that I used earlier and round over the front edges of both side pieces. And I can hear the question, hey Stan, how you gonna hang it on the wall, dude? Easy, a keyhole bit. Yes, I've used this before in my videos. Plunge the piece down onto the bit, then pull back to a mark that I've set that you cannot see from this angle. Sorry about that. And I get something like this. One for each side piece. Now I can assemble. I've used this finishing technique called Shosugiban in another video. Check the description if you want more information about it and all of its benefits. I'll link you over to a write-up I did on it over on my website at simplyeasydiy.com. After a few coats of satin poly, it can be mounted on the wall where it'll help clear all those wet towel clutter issues. Check me out on Facebook and Pinterest. Since you made it this far, go ahead and drop me a like or a dislike as well. Don't forget to subscribe for more simple and easy projects just like this one. Until then.